Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Yanga FX have just announced the release of Embergen 0.7.5. Now, Embergen 0.7.5 have been in beta for a while and we actually covered that but now it's very interesting to see that the final release is here and this is packed with a huge set of updates in terms of the UI, there's a brand new renderer, animated meshes are now supported, there's a camera input that you can now work with, backplate support and so much more. So, for those who would like to come through and check it, you can simply go over to the link in the description or go over to yangafx.com and check it out. And you can click on try now to try this and uh, you'll be able to get a 14 day trial which you can play with. And that is exactly what we're going to work with. So just in case you're wondering if it is possible, yep, it is. Before we actually talk about the new UI and all the fancy stuff you can play with, let's see what the previous Embergen looked like. This was what the previous version of Embergen looked like. Very interesting has almost everything you want. Like if you select the volume, you get your parameters here and you have your timeline. And this is very nice. It is the world's fastest volumetric tool that you can use to create some volumetric effects. And it is making so much sense now with the brand new release. So if we go over to the 0.7.5 and start a new project, you can see the UI looks extremely different. This is what we had before and this is what we're having now. Two different stuff. Now let's talk about the UI. The UI has changed dramatically and you can now see that right over here, like we mentioned when we talked about the beta, you can see that the nodes look even cleaner, nice bevelings across and uh, it just makes sense. Right here is where you can see what I will call an inspector. This is where every single thing that exists within your node graph is. So for a very good example, if I go in and choose to drag out a shape and let's say for example I like to use a primitive shape and select that if I go over to the node graph inspector I will be able to see all the things here and I can just simply instead of scanning through this place I want to do something with the noise I'll click go over to the noise section do or make some parameter changes I would like to make some changes to the ambient of course if you like to do that for the ground simple so you don't need to start scanning through all of this you can access everything from here and it makes so much sense. Now, the last time where we talked about this, we did mention that there was a favorite feature coming and that feature is right here. And how you can access that now is very simple. Let's say for example, this shape that we have here, we would like to favorite it so we can just simply work with it. What we need to do is we need to select this node and then go all the way down here and turn on favorite. And once we do that, if we go over to the favorite section, you can now see that here. The same thing happens with every single node that you have going on and this looks extremely beautiful something else which you would also notice is within this viewport or within the viewport section there is a lot of cool changes first off you would now notice that we can expand and also contract this all right so if you like to have this on a second monitor or you just want to get this you know full view you can do that if you would also like to play with a gizmo you have all the gizmos here and of course you can see the access widget right over here now, for those who would also love to play with the views, you like to play with several cameras, you can. So right here, we have the default and you can switch to another camera and you can position these however you want. And then you can switch all the way back to the default, switch back to your camera. And if you like to add even way more cameras, you can do that. So you can choose to throw in a new camera. So if you right click, you have access to all these nodes. And I love the idea that they've all been color coded. So they look pretty nice. Go over to the camera, add a new camera, and then unlink this camera and rewire this right here and once you do that we can switch from the default camera to a different camera and make some changes now once you make these changes and you go all the way back and switch to this camera you still see that for some very interesting reasons it still retains where this camera was looking so this also makes so much sense there's a couple more updates to the ui as from here you can now choose to see different things so if you like to view the bounding box, you can preview the bounding box from here. And if you would like to see the masking, you can see that. So anything you like to preview within your viewport directly under the view dropdown, you can see all of this. You like to see some statistics. Okay. Go over to the statistics section. You can see how much VRAM it's using. You can see all of these things, how much frames this is running. So let's go ahead and turn this off. And of course, if you like to play with the animation, you can, because at this point, if you bounce this all the way back and restart it, you can now bracket the animation and have it within a loop. So what do I mean? If I go in here and click on this toggle loop button, we can toggle the loop 
between the duration we would like to have this animation to play back. So we can say, you know, we'd like this to happen from zero to 160 and just reset this, press the playback button, and we just have this thing playing over and over and over and over and over again. And this is just one of those cool things that you'll be getting. So at this point, you can see your animation starts from zero all the way to one, but there is literally no change in the simulation time that I get to see. So if you just want to see your playhead go back and forth, you can see that. Now let's talk about how you can play with the rendering and also the volume, because this is actually one of the places that lots of you guys will be interested in. And at the same time, we're going to talk more about the animation later on. So from here, if you click on the volume, let's actually stop this animation for a bit and bounce this back. And let's play it back one more time and stop. So if you go over to the volume, there are certain render modes that exist. The first one is the volumetric, then we have the particle experimental, and then we have the hybrid experimental. So if I bounce this, press the playback, this is what you get for the particle experimental. And if you change this to hybrid, you can see this real time. So if you like to have a combination of what you get with the default volumetric and at the same time with a particle experimental, you can mix these things up. At the same time, if you go over to the post-processing, let's say you want to give a little bit of love to this and add some post-processing, you can also choose from the post-processing presets that exist, not really presets but options. So from here, you can choose from motion blur in case you like to have motion blur, you like to change the style of motion blur to maybe Gaussian, you like to change the temperature, you know, stuff like this. Let's bracket this one more time, bounce this back, press the playback button and see what we get. Now if you also choose to switch this from motion blur to sharp, you can see that if you like to switch this from sharp to dial it, you can also get this cool result with it. Most of you guys may want to render these things out. Let's say for some reason you would like to take this over to uh, a 3D app, do some proper lighting there, do some rendering, use it for your project. Yes you can. If you like to export this, you can export this as VDB, okay? So if you click, drag and drop, the node that is responsible for this pops up. So you don't necessarily need to think about the node and be like, hmm, I need to right click, I need to find the node. You don't need to do that. If you need things like colliders, click and drag and your colliders will pop up. And then you can now say, okay, this is the shape I would like to use as a collider. And in this case, you have literally everything you can to make that amazing next volumetric simulation that you want. So it's just simplifying the whole process of volumetric simulation and just think about the fact that this is real time, all right? It's just crazy real time. And I'm not baking anything, nothing is caching to the memory. This is just crazy. So something else that exists right now is the mask shape. So with this, you can mask based off any of these parameters to shape. I would also love to mention that once you're working with your nodes as well, you can mute these nodes if you don't want them to have any effect. So if we play back, and of course you'd notice that we already have our collider. Let's uh, make sure that we have that collider selected. You know, we already have this collider having so much fun. If we would like to turn this off, we can turn it off and you can see that we don't have any of that influence. So you can mute any node you don't want to have influence or you don't want it to have influence and you can work with it. And if you would like to animate all of this, you can as well. So let's say we would like to animate the sphere, for example, we can animate the position. So if I bounce this back and I go over to where we have as position and I choose to make this a position, let's just make some alterations just to make sure that we have those keyframes there. And if I move over to, let's say, frame 160 move this to this point bounce this all the way back and uh, press the playback button you can see we have this okay so we can also make this object go towards the side and uh, let's just make it crazy okay so let's just pick something crazy grab this here move this there and have fun okay so we can do all of this send this back press the playback button and yep you can also choose to export this as vdbs once you select this as a vdb select the number of frames you like to export place you like to export this to and of course if you like to export this based off setting attributes you can so you can choose to export based of the density the fuel temperature velocity flames all that okay once you're ready select and hit the export button to export this and of course, you might also want to consider taking a look at the timeline. And this tab just simply tells you the object that have keyframes. And uh, this is also a very good way of tracking what you have here. And it wouldn't allow you or wouldn't make you or force you to think too much about what I have as keyframes and what I don't have as keyframes. If you like to get a simple render out of this, you can also choose to render this. Click on the drop down and you can render any of these ones 
that you want. So let's say you just like to render the scattering, of course you can. If you like to render the albedo, you have that there. Whatever you like to render, you have access to all of this. And of course, you can also proceed to export these things as images. And these can be exported as flipbooks, which you can now use in your game engine of choice. So lovely stuff from the folks at Yanga FX. And of course, if you like to take a look at some of the demos, you can. So just go over to the preset section. There is a whole lot of presets that are available here that you can pick from. So you like a touch light, don't save, open up the touch light, lovely. Bring these into your app. You know, you can just export this as a VDB and start making some pretty cool and decent stuff with it. You can also probably say you would like to get some poison smoke. I think this is also a cool one. And you can get this poison smoke and lovely stuff. And that's about it. Embergen 0.7.5 is now here and it is by far the world's fastest volumetric fluid simulator and you can start doing some amazing and crazy stuff with it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and until I see you guys in the next one, peace.